Good day and welcome to my next video and today I'm going to show you how to find the inverse of a matrix. Now before we actually get into the inverse of a matrix I need to show you how to find something called the determinant of a matrix. To find the inverse of a matrix uh, not sorry, but to find the inverse of a matrix is not just one step. There are a few steps involved in finding the inverse of a matrix, but the first step is something called the determinant of a matrix. Now, don't let the big word determinant fool you. To find the determinant of a matrix is going to be super easy, despite its long, scary name. So I'm going to show you how to find the determinant of a matrix now. I'm going to do three examples for you. And you're going to be surprised how easy it is. Just be on the lookout for two minus signs. Sometimes in some of the questions, two negatives will touch to give you a positive. It won't happen all the time, but it will happen sometimes. So let's be on the lookout for it. So let's find the determinant of a matrix. Now, you're, you're, uh, if you're writing the CXE exam, you, might, you will only be asked to find the determinant of a two by two matrix. That's the one with two rows and two columns. So let me show you how to find it. You notice in the two by two matrix, there are one, two, three, four numbers. Try to imagine two diagonals, one going this way and one going this way. Right, so it's like a little X. You see the one going from the upper left to the lower right? This is called your leading diagonal, or in, uh, in simple terms, I call it the more important one. So the one going from the upper left to the lower right is the more important one. You are going to multiply the more important one first, or the leading diagonal first. Minus 1, we're going to take minus 1 and multiply it by 4. Obviously, there's a secret multiply in between here. So we multiply the first diagonal. As soon as we multiply the first diagonal, or the more important one, you must, 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 must put a minus sign. So I usually make my students put must, 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 must put. So as soon as you multiply the first diagonal, put a minus sign, no matter what. And then multiply the less important diagonal. So 2 multiplied by 3. And all we have to do is simplify this and we're finished. So, um, now I'm kind of sorry I put so much my signs, but let's hope you can see down here. Minus 1 multiplied by 4 is minus 4, right? Remember this minus sign? That's this minus sign. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. Minus 4 minus 6 is minus 10. We're finished. The determinant is minus 10 for this 2 by 2 matrix. Let's try another one here. Almost the same situation, just different numbers. This is the more important diagonal. We have to multiply the more important diagonal first. So we're going to take minus 3 and multiply it by 10. We can do that one time. Minus 3 by 10 is minus 30. Now, remember this note about the mass, 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 mass. As soon as you multiply the first diagonal, put a minus sign. You must put it. And then multiply the other diagonal. That's this guy here, the less important one. Four, sorry, four multiplied by minus one is minus four. Ah, you notice two negatives touch, they came together, and when two negatives touch, you get a positive. Minus 30 plus four is minus 26. Be on the lookout. Sometimes two negatives come together, sometimes they don't. In this one, they did not, and in this one, they did. So, excuse me one second. Uh, sorry, sometimes, yeah, camera shuts off automatically, so sometimes I'll be check to make sure it hasn't uh, cut off. All right, let's try a harder one now. So, there's, um, this one has letters in it, and the examiner could still ask you to find the determinant. It's the same exact procedure. Multiply the more important diagonal first. 3a multiplied by 1 is 3a because anything multiplied by 1 is itself. What do you have to put after no matter what? A minus sign. And then we multiply the other diagonal. 
minus 2b by 4 is minus 8b. Plus 2 by 4 is 8. The probability b, and don't forget the probability minus sign. Looky here. Two negatives touch. So is 3a, two negatives, is a positive, and you have a b. This is as simple as it can get. Because he has an A and he has a B. You cannot squish them together. So this is your final answer. This is the determinant of that matrix. So now you know how to find the determinant. I'm going to show you how to find the inverse of a matrix now. So let's uh, give me a few seconds just to clear the board here. All right. See what I can do about three examples side by side. So now we're going to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. Okay? So let's start off. Question one. Minus four. All right. So we're going to find the inverse of this matrix. The first step is to find the determinant. So let's find the determinant first. It shouldn't be too hard. We have to multiply the more important diagonal first. Minus one multiplied by four is positive four. You must, must, must put a minus sign after. Then multiply the other diagonal. Two by three is six. If you do this, well, four minus six is minus two. This here is your determinant. But the question is to find the inverse. The determinant is just the first step. Here's what you need to do. Whatever you get for the determinant, no matter what you get, in today's question we got minus two, you always throw it underneath a one. That's just, it's just a procedure you have to follow. So if you get minus two, just throw it underneath a one. Then pull back another big pair of brackets. And here's what you're going to do. You see the more important diagonal? They're going to switch their positions. So the minus 4 is going to jump here, and the minus 1 is going to go here. So they exchange their positions. That's for the more important diagonal only. So the minus 4 will go here, and the minus 1 will go here. See, they switch positions. The less important diagonal, that's the 2 and the 3, you do not move them. Instead, you look at each one individually and make them the opposite. So if he is positive 3, he will become negative 3. If he is positive 2, he will become negative 2. But they do not, I repeat, they do not switch positions. So the opposite of positive 3 is negative 3, and the opposite of positive 2 is negative 2. And this is your inverse. This is your final answer. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can multiply every one inside here by minus a half. But from my experience, if the examiner, in, in a lot of examinations, from my experience, if you leave your answer like this without multiplying every one inside it by minus a half and you leave it with the fraction outside, you will get full marks. Okay? And this is just my personal opinion. Usually when you find the inverse of something in a in an exam paper, you will need to take the inverse and do something else with it. And in my experience, if you leave it like this and proceed, the question, it's, it's uh, easier to work out once you leave it like this, if you have to take this and do something else with it. So my advice is, leave it just like this. Let's do another example. Example two. Let's find the inverse of this matrix. All right, what's the first step in finding the inverse of any matrix? Find the determinant. So multiply the more important one first. Minus 5 by 1 is minus 5. You must put a minus sign no matter what. Then you multiply the other diagonal. 6 multiplied by minus 1 is minus 6. Look here. The two negative signs touch to give you a positive. So, minus 5 plus 6 will give me 1. So, I got my determinant to be 1. Remember, whatever you get for the determinant, you must throw it underneath a 1. 
So we have our one. This one is not this one. Eh? This is the mandatory one we have to put. And whatever we get for the determinant, we throw it underneath the one. Then we put a big pair of brackets. The more important diagonal switch positions. The one will jump here, the minus five will jump here. So the one jumps here and the minus five will jump here. Remember the other diagonal, the less important one, they do not move. You just look at each one and make them the opposite. So look at him individually. The opposite of minus one is positive one. And the opposite of positive six is minus six. Now, this one can simplify a little more. I mean, one divided by one is one. So it makes no sense putting the one divided by one, right? It would look ridiculous putting one divided by one. So one divided by one is one. Now, to make it even simpler, like this question, we had the, op we had the option of multiplying every one inside here by the minus a half. But we don't have to do that. We can leave it like this. If we multiply every one inside here by one, one multiplied by anything is itself. So having the one on the outside is irrelevant, right? So just throw it away because when you multiply every one inside here by one, you get back the same thing anyway. All right? So if you have one divided by one on the outside, it's mathematically correct, except it looks ridiculous. Okay? So I would simplify it and not put it at all. Let's try another one. Let's find the inverse of 2y minus 3, 4x, and 1. And let's make it 0. Let's see how we deal with a 0. So, how would we find the determinant? Remember, the determinant is the first part of finding the inverse. Let's find the determinant. Multiply the more important or leading diagonal first. 2y by 0. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0. You must, must, must put a minus sign right after. Multiply the other diagonal. 4x by minus 3 is minus 12x. You notice two negatives come together, so you end up with 0 plus 12x, but 0 plus 12x is also what? 12x. So we have the determinant. The determinant is 12x. To find the inverse, we have to take this 12x and always throw it underneath, sorry, the 12x and throw it underneath a 1. The more important diagonal, you switch position. So the 0 jumps here and the 2y jumps downstairs there. The other diagonal, the less important one. What do we do with them? We make them the opposite, but they do not move. Minus 3 becomes positive 3, and positive 4x becomes minus 4x. And this is your answer. That's the inverse of that matrix. Right? So, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to use matrices to solve a simultaneous equation. Equation. There are many ways to solve a simultaneous equations, and you can find them in my first set of videos. I think it's from video 7 all the way to video 13 or something like that. You can use um, the XX method, the YY method, the substitution method. Um, there's the, I mean, if I said the elimination method already. But there are a lot of methods you can use to solve a simultaneous equation. And you're going to add one more to the list matrices. So in my next video, I'll show you how to use a matrix to solve a simultaneous equation. So I hope this video was helpful and don't forget to check the website below for more details and don't forget to subscribe and share the link. Thank you and have a good day.